The story begins with a young assassin named Su Lo, infiltrating a villa, attempting to steal the dragon's ring. She comes close to the ring, calling the security pathetic. But when she grabs the ring, an emergency alert is sent to the guards, who immediately begin pursuing her. Her partner rushes to her aid and knocks the guards out. They quickly depart the estate and board a ship to discuss their plans. She informs Yun, her lover, that she wishes for the two of them to quit their organization. However, he gets apprehensive and tells her that the only way for someone to leave the organization is through death. He stabs her, but finds out that she switched out the dragon's ring with another that she had prepared for their wedding. She takes the dragon's ring and leaps into the ocean, but the dragon's ring is activated. Elsewhere, we see a man as he fights demonic boars with his lightning attacks. He senses a disturbance in the time-space and heads towards it. At the low mansion, a young girl is being tortured by a group of people, and Sue is reincarnated into the girl's body. She is confused at first, but gains the memories of the body. She starts fighting back and quickly gets the upper hand against her opponents. The man arrives, and helps knock out her attackers. When he approaches her, she ends up attacking him as well. He gets back up and grabs her, heading straight for the testing palace, where everyone born must pass the spiritual exam. He tells her that she was tested when she was five years old, but had zero spiritual energy. The spirit energy is divided up by the five elements, and has seven different levels. She has no affinity with wind, water or lightning, but her spiritual grade for wood and fire is the highest level. The famous dragon's ring is also discovered in her body as she completes the test. It's a legendary item, from when the time-space goddess and the great emperor Ninian fought together against the spiritual beings. And when the emperor died, the goddess sealed his soul into the dragon's ring. Crow-shaped monsters begin to appear as soon as they sense her. The man quickly sends Sue off on his horse while dealing with the monsters. Back at the mansion, Sue's servant girl, Lulu, is overjoyed that she's okay. Sue finds out that she is actually the crown princess. Sue drinks some tea, but it's disgusting, because ever since her spiritual energy was measured to be zero, she has been treated like garbage, especially by her sister Shuxi, who wants to take her position as the crown princess. To Sue's amazement, the little girl discloses the young man's identity to be Prince Jin Wong, he is the world's number one cultivator of the lightning element. Meanwhile, in the crown prince's palace, he enjoys the company of some beautiful women. But suddenly, one of the girls speaks in a man's voice, the woman transforms into a mysterious figure, and the two plot against Jin Wong. He reports about Jin's visit to the testing palace and notes he was accompanied by Su. The crown prince visits the Lone Mansion, and Su is brought before the prince. Shuxi appears and accuses Su of being jealous of her looks and attempting to poison her. Shuxi has also organized the barracks commander to show a fake bounty that he claims was issued by Su. As they argue, the prince is attacked by an unknown individual, who is eventually revealed to be Mr. Beiching Ling, master of the Beiching Palace and chairman of the barracks. He reveals that the barracks commander took a bribe. Ling is well acquainted with the crown prince, and Su wonders if the prince is gay. Su's father reprimands her for her behavior in front of the prince and has her detained. Su awakens in the dungeon to discover Lulu sobbing at the cell door. Lulu tries to pick the lock but Shuxi appears. She and her servants begin beating up little Lulu. Shuxi tries to whip Su, but Su grabs a hold of it, pulling her in and threatening her. Their father appears, and he attacks her, seeing her as nothing more than trash. The prison shakes and Prince Jin Wang arrives, smashing the roof open. Seeing Su in such a state, he becomes angered. Su's father suddenly switches sides and begins criticizing Shuxi for plotting against Su. He tries to suck up to Su but she calls him shameless, and she decides to cut her ties to the family. Su is brought to Prince Jin Wang's palace. Jin tries to sense the dragon's ring in her body. He explains that the dragon's ring has the power of time space, but it's suppressing the power of her fire and wood elements. Thinking about how Lulu was beaten, Su asks the prince to help her unseal her powers. He tries giving her a bunch of different elixirs to help unlock her powers, but no matter how many she eats, it has no effect. When that doesn't work, he goes to look up the manuscripts, and he notices one in the language of the ancient gods, but as he reads the scroll, something dark emerges from the scroll and strikes him. He wakes up and finds his hand is being consumed, but shocks himself with his lightning to keep it contained. Sue goes to find the prince, but finds him unconscious on the floor. She tries to help him, but the prince's eyes turn red and he suddenly snatches her by the neck. 
Using some glass, Sue cuts the prince and manages to get free, and he soon passes out. A celestial entity in the guise of a lovely lady arrives and looks after his health. Later, Lulu tells her that the heavenly figure is the Yao Chi Palace's master, Liao. Prince Jin Wang appears in front of her and apologizes for hurting her. Sue asks if he found a way to unlock her powers, and he tells her that they need the water of spiritual sky, but it is only found in the Crown Prince's palace, so their only option is to steal it, which Sue is confident at doing. Later that night, they sneak into the Crown Prince's palace. In the treasure room, they fall into an illusion, which takes them to a hidden armory, where weapons of every caliber are stored. Jin Wang assesses the situation, and notes that their goal is to make it to the next door. It's guarded by thunder clouds, so he uses his own lightning to draw the clouds' attacks away. Su dashes toward the door, but gets a strange feeling in her head, as a strange blade calls out to her. She becomes distracted and rushes for the blade. The clouds return and strike lightning on her, but Su is able to use the blade, as it recognizes her as its master. The two get through the door and make it to the water of spiritual sky. The ground shakes, and Su is subsequently dragged up into a massive sphere of water. Jin jumps in to save her. Su begins to drown and Jin kisses her to give her air. The crown prince goes to catch them, but when he arrives, the water prison is broken and the two have vanished. The crown prince suspects that they were able to escape because of the time-space power. The two were transported back to Jin Wan's palace, and they even returned with the alchemy pot. Liao appears, bringing important news about a rare beast hunt occurring in the Sunset Mountains. In the mountains, Liao is excited for their hunt, but Jin disappoints her, telling her to go on ahead while he takes Su somewhere safe. He sets her down and gives her a pendant in case she gets into trouble. He heads back to Liao, a dragon appears, breathing fire at them, so they combine their energies to fight against it. Meanwhile, Su discovers a mysterious egg and becomes overjoyed. But the crown prince appears behind her. He wants her back, now that he knows she has the power of time space. He warns her about Jin Wong, saying he suffers from a dark energy that will one day consume him, but he used the power of space to suppress it, which he absorbed from his mother, and will do the same to her. The crown prince hears the roar of a dragon, and a blast of energy is fired at their location. Su falls, and when she wakes up, she looks for the egg and finds it hatching. It hatches into a dragon, and it bonds with her, and suddenly her time-space power activates and she falls asleep. When she wakes up, she finds herself in a completely different place. The dragon can speak, and tells her this is a space she created. The dragon explains to Sue that only her soul can enter the space, so her body is still on the outside. The crown prince's aide approaches Sue's body, seeing she has unlocked her wood and fire elements, but quickly leaves when he hears another voice. Sue awakens to find a girl saying that Jin Wong sent her to look for her. However, when Sue looks the other way, she pulls out a dagger. While she is attempting to kill Su, her dragon appears and eats the assassin's blade, and even bites off the woman's hand. Su gets behind the girl and finishes her off. She recognizes the girl as being one of Li Yao's maids. The crown prince wakes up and finds the pendant that Jin had given to Su. Jin appears and confronts him about Su's whereabouts. Li Yao begs Jin to rest. Suddenly Su appears and Jin is overjoyed that she is okay. Jin tries to approach her, but she pushes him away. He asks who harmed her, and Su points out Liao's maid. Jin says that they were with him the whole time, and asks Su to believe him, but she thinks he is only interested in her power of time space. She takes out her dagger to ward him off, but this causes Liao to defend him. But Jin steps in the way and takes the attack to protect Su. We see them back at the palace, and Jin's dark energy is going out of control. He is kept restrained as Ling, and some of the elders try to treat him. Suddenly, a ray of light appears, and Liao materializes in the room, able to calm Jin down. She has not been able to find a cure for Jin, but suggests they need to find Grandmaster Hong Yun, the best potion maker in the land. Su insists on accompanying Liao to find the Grandmaster, saying she can help out, but Liao laughs at her. Despite their differences, they come to an agreement and head off. At the Crown Prince's palace, we learn that he had actually let Jin and Su go. He wants to kill Jin, but the only way to do that is to let his darkness consume him. He would need to kill Su, who is the key to curing his darkness, but the crown prince also wanted her time-space powers for himself. His partner calls him too greedy, and the two go their separate ways. Su and Liao travel on their flying horse to the Yunwu mountain, but they find that it's protected by a barrier that disables their powers. 
so they are forced to climb up, which Liao struggles with. Su takes the lead, and eventually are able to make it to the top. They meet the Grandmaster Hong Yun, and Liao asks for his help. He says he has no interest in their gifts, but tells them if they fight, he will help the winner. Liao creates countless arrows, firing them at Su. Su dodges the arrows, but when some are about to hit her, she manages to block with a barrier of wood. Liao loses sight of Su, and she reappears behind her with her sword to her neck. And Su is declared to be the winner, but the Grandmaster was also impressed by Liao's abilities. He invites her to participate in his event, where he will choose a disciple next month. Liao leaves Jin's care to Su, and she leaves to prepare for the event. The two then get ready to return to treat Jin, and the Grandmaster uses a strange technique that teleports them across the country. Su is shocked how they arrived back at the palace, and the master reveals he used space magic. He tells the others that, in order to treat Jin, he requires a large amount of high-quality crystals to make an elixir. Ling is shocked at the number of crystals needed, and they immediately gather all the crystals that they have, but find that they don't have enough. Ling explains to Su that crystals have different grades based on their color, and that they are found when cutting open stones, so it's all up to luck to get the high-quality crystals. Su's dragon Meng appears, salivating at the thought of eating the crystals. It turns out Meng is able to sense the grade of the crystal without even cutting it open. Su gets an idea and heads to the market. Meng transforms into a dog. They go to the stone guessing market, and Meng picks out all the valuable stones. As Su goes to pay, two strangers suddenly appear in the market and announce that they are buying up all the stones for their grandfather's birthday. They are identified as Hao and Di the young masters of the Luoya house. Su tries to ignore them, walking away, but the two try to grab her bag. They end up spilling all the stones on the floor and mixing them all up. They are unable to tell who owns which stones, so Su proposes a wager. They each pick three stones, and whoever chooses the best gets to keep everything. The siblings pick first, but when Hao grabs a good stone, Ming quickly pees on it to stop him from picking it. When they open up the stones, the siblings have two crystals, while Su has three, so she gets to take all the stones. Su's sister Shuxi appears and tries to convince the siblings to join her in dealing with Su, but they are not interested. Shuxi is then approached by the crown prince's ex-partner and claims he wants to be her ally in dealing with Su. Back at the palace, Ling is shocked at the number of crystals Su was able to obtain. Su and Ling are waiting outside, and Hong Yun finishes Jin's treatment. Jin is revealed in a much better state, Su tells him once again that she has repaid her debt to him and tries to leave, but he tells her to stay by his side. But Su is hesitant because when his dark energy goes out of control, he will try to devour her power again. However, the Grandmaster tells her that if she becomes strong enough, Jin will not be able to devour her power, but instead she will be able to cure him. The Grandmaster tells her that if she can learn how to make an elixir in time, he will let her participate in his disciple selection event. A few days later, Su and Jin travel together through the ocean, and they soon arrive at an island that rises out of the sea. It contains countless secret cultivation books that are highly sought after. More ships arrive, and they are soon joined by other people, including Ling, the siblings, and Liao. Once they enter, there are countless doors revealed, but only one leads to the treasure. They all pick different doors to try, and Meng pops out of Su's clothes and jumps on Liao. Liao gets annoyed and leaves to choose a different door, but Meng opens the door, sensing treasure. An enormous fish skeleton emerges from the ground and soon turns into an entrance, and it appears to be the treasure room. After Su finishes choosing her books, they are all transported back to the hallway. Liao is devastated that Su has found the treasure room from her original door, and her brother Tian swears to help her get even. There is an earthquake, and everyone gets split up. Su is transported outside, and is suddenly attacked by ice. Liao's brother Tian intends to kill her and take the books back for his sister. Su's foot gets stuck and she gets trapped in an ice coffin. There is an explosion and the ice coffin goes flying into the ocean. When Su wakes up, she finds herself on land, although she is still trapped in ice. Jin finds her and he tells her to date him for three months and Su reluctantly agrees. Jin uses his lightning to melt the ice. He manages to free Su but ends up falling unconscious. Su can tell that he was already wounded, but still tried so hard to help her. Su gathers some herbs, but is soon confronted by Tian. Su runs away from him as he continuously attacks. Su is eventually caught and her hands are tied up as they go to find Jin. On their way, she tells him that she needs to pee. 
She hides behind a rock and quickly summons Meng, who is easily able to bite through the rope. After a while, Tian notices that Su has escaped. Tian creates a massive blizzard to flush her out, and as she tries to avoid his attacks, she falls down a cliff, landing in a strange crimson area. Tian follows after her, but finds that his ice magic doesn't work in the scarlet area. There's a cave, and Su heads deeper into the area. A stone tablet appears, saying that the fire cave can only be sealed if you sacrifice half of your cultivation. Tian doesn't care about the penalty, and seals the cave. Soon, Jin arrives, having recovered from his injury. Jin is furious and knocks him out. Inside the cave, Su passes out from the heat and Meng tries to help her. He takes out her alchemy pot and puts her inside. Su dreams about helping Jin, and Su starts gathering herbs unconsciously. Jin sacrifices his cultivation and reopens the cave. He finds Su unconscious on the floor. She wakes up and is glad to see him. When she opens her hand, she finds three pills. Jin tells her that they are pills to help restore one's cultivation. She had unconsciously made them while wanting to help Jin recover. Jin takes one of the pills and is able to restore the cultivation that he sacrificed to open the cave. Su becomes happy that with these pills, she is qualified for the Grandmaster's event. The day of the event arrives, and the Leah siblings plan to expose Su. The Crown Prince acts as the host of the event, and he announces the rules. Every family is allowed to send one person to submit an elixir they have created. If the elixir is of high enough quality, the pot will glow and they will be allowed to participate in the event. Ling casually passes through with his elixir, and Shuxi passes as well. When it's Su's turn, Liao interrupts. They both throw their elixirs in, and the crowd is impressed at Liao's blue glow. However, Su's elixir is rated with a purple glow, the highest possible level. But before Su qualifies, Liao points out that Shuxi is already in the competition, and it's against the rules to have two members of a family participating. But suddenly, the sibling's plan to expose Su is put into action, and Di exposes that Su is actually adopted and has no right to participate for her family. This plan backfires and Jin jumps on stage, claiming Su is not breaking any rules. The next round begins, and each participant is given 15 minutes and a chest with random ingredients to create an elixir, and the top four will advance to the next round. The Grandmaster judges the level and quality of each elixir. Su is in fifth place and misses out on the next round. However, Ling withdraws, and Su takes his spot. The next event is a deathmatch with no rules. Su is up against Shuxi, and Shuxi quickly gains the upper hand as she hurls her aura towards Su. Jin is confused how Shuxi was able to suddenly get so strong. Shuxi charges up her power, while Su combines her wood and fire elements to create a whip. However, it's not enough to break through Shuxi's attack. Shuxi begins to celebrate, but Su takes out her elixir and eats it. It gives her a surge in power, and Su activates her space magic, destroying Shuxi's magic and purges her dark power. As Jin watches, he spots the shady figure that was helping Shuxi and pulls him in. He is revealed to be a member of the assassin's clan that has been chasing Jin since he was a boy. As Jin goes to unmask him, the man uses a technique and manages to get away. The final event begins. They are transported into an underground maze, but Liao recognizes where she is. They are in the underground passages beneath her family's palace. They are sent to find a firestone. Mei ends up getting the firestone, which he found hidden in the wall. Liao finds them. She is able to activate the traps in the maze dropping boulders onto Su. Using her scarf, Liao steals the firestone from Su and drops another boulder on them. Su is confused why she is able to activate the traps, but Liao tells her that the Grandmaster must be helping her to win. Liao returns from the maze, and she hands over the firestone to the Grandmaster. They are interrupted by a woman. She is revealed to be Yan, the Mist Fairy from the Demonic Clan. She explains that 15 years ago the Grandmaster crippled her eldest disciple and vowed to provide her with a replacement. Liao gets taken, and with her gone, Su is chosen to be the Grandmaster's disciple. The Grandmaster and Su arrive at Yunwa's peak. He tells her about the place, but Su is not allowed to enter his house. He gives her a book about herbs and tells her she needs to memorize it. Elsewhere, Liao is ready to submit and calls Yan her master, but Yan casts a spell on Liao's face. She says it's a magic that will reveal her true appearance, but Liao is confused. After a month, Su has finally memorized the book. The Grandmaster tests her and pushes her off the cliff. Su focuses and manages to open a portal. 
The Grandmaster congratulates her, and Sue realizes he is teaching her both potion making and space magic at the same time. Sue goes to find the Grandmaster, but remembers she is forbidden from entering, but she sees a painting of a woman that moves and Sue is too curious. She sees that the woman wields the same weapon as her. Suddenly the Grandmaster appears, startling Sue when she accidentally cuts the painting. Sue feels terrible and thinks of a way to make it up to her master. She looks in her book to find out what the painting was made of, and finds that it is composed of the leaves from the acacia tree, which can only be found in the forbidden dark forest. Sue arrives at the dark forest. As she explores, a girl comes running out, as a golem chases after her. Sue fights with the golem, attacking with her fire, but it has little effect. Sue opens a portal to retreat, and the girl jumps in with her. The girl thanks Sue for saving her and introduces herself as May. They soon get attacked by tree roots, but Sue gets grabbed by a root from behind and gets dragged away. The roots take Sue to the acacia tree, and she begs to have some of its leaves. But the tree forces her to eat its fruit, and Sue finds that the acacia tree has grown in her inner space. The woman from the Grandmaster's painting appears, and then we learn that Hong Yun was her disciple. They both vanish, and a tiny baby appears. Sue recognizes that these are the memories of the tree, and it begins speaking with her. The tree wants Sue to be her master, so he can travel with her using her space. Meanwhile, Mei and Meng find Sue, but she is unconscious because she's in her inner space. They get attacked by Li Yao and her master. Sue gets captured, and Mei is defeated, but she manages to send off one of her cranes to get help. When Sue wakes up, she finds herself imprisoned by Li Yao and her master. Li Yao uses the face revealing potion on Sue, and Yan goes to prepare for the Grandmaster's arrival. A mask forms on Sue's face, and Liao enjoys her suffering, but Sue taunts her, saying she is hiding her face because she has become ugly. Meanwhile, Jin receives Mei's letter, informing him of Sue's condition, and he instantly rushes to find her. Sue quietly opens her space, and tree roots begin to spread. The roots burst out and capture Liao, but Liao tells her she will not be able to escape from her master's barrier. Sue tells Li Yao, if she can help her escape, she will give her the fruit of the acacia tree, which can heal all wounds and ailments. Li Yao helps her escape, and Sue gives her the fruit, and Yan appears behind them. Yan's magic is too strong, and she overpowers Li Yao. Sue works out the secret behind the barrier. Sue creates a magic bell, that rings and destroys the barrier, and they all fall down the cliff, into the sea. Meanwhile, Jin and Ling arrive in the dark forest. We learn that Mei actually has the same master as Jin. They're not sure where Sue was taken, so they decide to split up. Jin arrives at the Twilight Mist and finds the Grandmaster is also looking for Sue. The Grandmaster tells Jin to find Sue, but warns him that she might not be the same. Sue floats on some wood, and a ship passes by. She gets saved, and when she wakes up, a man enters the room. She is shocked, recognizing him as Yun, her lover that betrayed her. He tells her not to be afraid, but Sue backs away from him and falls. She looks in the mirror, and sees that her face has changed. Yun explains that he is the same person from her past, but this is actually her original world. And Sue is left wondering who she really is. We see Mei, as she searches for Sue. Ling teases her for wearing a cooking pan on her head. But Mei says that it was because of her that Sue went missing, and that she won't take it off until they find her. Jin appears, and tells them to be serious. He says he has sent out over 100,000 men to look for Su across the kingdom. Ling says he has also recruited 30,000 mercenaries to help them search across the land. They split up to continue their search, and Jin swears to find Su at all costs. Meanwhile, a group of assassins flee, as Grandmaster Hong Yun pursues them. They know they are no match for him, and ask for a swift death, because the assassin clan forbids them from revealing their secrets. However, the Grandmaster reveals a white token, and the assassins recognize him as the White Lord. With this, they reveal Su's location, telling him she is with Yun, the prince of the Xijing nation. Back on the ship, Su meets with Yun, and he has prepared some hot pot like they would have in the other world. Su has a flashback to when she and a group of other abandoned kids were adopted to be assassins. Su is feeling down, but Yun cheers her up with some hot pot, and they make a promise to be with each other forever. Yun tries to remind Su of their promise, but Su doesn't trust him because he betrayed her. Yun explains she is originally from this world, and when he stabbed her, he avoided her vital points. It was his last resort to get the dragon's ring to activate so she could return to this world. Su tells him the only reason she is with him is to learn about her identity. They are suddenly alerted, 
but it turns out to be just the servant. Su heads outside, and Yun follows after her. Su sees a peculiar bird and some ships on the horizon. Yun says the bird has good vision and is commonly used by spies. Suspecting that someone is following them, he instructs his servant Jia to locate the closest port for them. After arriving at the harbor, they establish camp in the woods. Yun tells her he was assigned to be her friend on earth, and his father knows her true origins, including her parents. Yun tries to distract her with the sunset, but Su tells him that their time has passed, so he should stop trying to win her over. Later that night, Su sneaks out, but gets caught by Jia. Su says she was just going to the bathroom, but Jia insists on accompanying her, but it seems they are being watched. Su sends out the acacia tree, and heads back with Jia. Meanwhile, the acacia tree grows and catches the spies that were following them. They turn out to be the men that Jin sent out to find Su. The tree delivers a message from Su to the Grandmaster, saying she can fix his painting and apologizes for being unable to return. The men realize that they have found Su, and they quickly send word to her friends. The next day, on their way to meet Yun's father, they are suddenly attacked by paper cranes. Ling and may appear before Su, but they don't recognize her, and quickly apologize and leave. Suddenly lightning strikes, and Jin appears. He embraces her, glad to have finally found her. But when he sees her face, he becomes apprehensive, grabbing her with his lightning and questioning who she is. Things look bad for Su, but Meng breaks things up, leaping into Su's arms and returning to her inner space. When Jin notices this, he remembers the Grandmaster's warning that she might not be the same when he found her. Realizing she is Su, he tells her how much he missed her, but Yin comes and takes her other hand, and the two begin to fight over Su. In the end, Su breaks up the fight, and Jin asks why she stayed with Yun instead of coming back to him, and she tells him Yun has answers about her true identity. Jin demands to join her, and Yun has no choice but to allow them. They have a break for Hot Pot, and Yun brings up stories from his past with Su. Jin gets jealous, and they fight again, this time over giving Su food. Meanwhile, in the Hell City, Jin's master meets with his other disciple Sean. They are plotting to help Jin claim the throne, but the master scolds Sean for failing his mission. As he exits the room, he notices Li Yao walking into the master's room with a veil covering her face. Afterward, Sean confronts Li Yao, asking why she is wearing a veil. She explains her face was scarred, and he wants to help her get justice, but Li Yao says it doesn't matter, and Sean is surprised how mature she has become. Li Yao takes her leave, but as she does, the Grandmaster passes by, and she wonders if he was also there to see her master. Meanwhile, we meet the Emperor as he chastises the Crown Prince. They have a disagreement over the Prince's wife, as the Emperor doesn't give his blessing for their union. As the Crown Prince leaves the palace, he knows he is being followed, as a paper talisman reveals itself. Su and the group climb through a snowy mountain to get to the Xijin capital. Jin appears to struggle with some kind of condition, but hides it from the others. They are suddenly attacked by a pack of beasts, and they prove to be quite a challenge. Jin is able to fend them off, but becomes affected by his condition. The group gets split up, with Yin leading Su away. But Su turns back to help her friends. She covers herself in the holy water, and attracts all the beasts towards her. As they jump on her, she teleports away. She leads them off a cliff, grabbing onto the acacia tree, and the beasts fall into the water. There is one beast left, and Jin saves her just in time, but ends up falling unconscious. Su kisses him and brings him into her space, which helps to improve his condition. Su swears she will cure him when she gets stronger. When they return from the inner space, Su checks on Jia, but ends up binding her with the acacia's branches, saying she knows what she did. Jia had put a special spice into their meal, which attracts the normally peaceful snow beasts. She says she wanted to help Yun by splitting Su away from Jin. When Jin is ready to attack her, Yun comes to her aid and defends her. Su lets it go, but warns him not to mess with her friends. As soon as everyone continues forward, Jia thanks Yun for keeping her safe, but she is suspicious and casts a spell on him to make him weak. Later, as they arrive at the Shijin Palace, they find it to be dark inside. Jin detects 50 people in the shadows, but suddenly there are fireworks, and the King Ouyang appears. There is a whole production, as he sings a song to welcome Su, and says it's been over a decade since he saw her. He tells her to call him uncle, as he is friends with her mother. Su asks how he knows her mother, and the king goes into another song. When the king was young, he escaped the palace to explore the world, but ended up broke and alone. That's when he met Su's mother, who fed him, and helped him get back to his country. 
When he became king, he swore to help her in any way. The last time he saw her, she brought Sue, and told him she has too many enemies, so she asked him to use the dragon's ring to send Sue to Earth, where she would be safe. He then sent his own son as well, with the instruction to stab her when the time is right. Jin is confused why she had to be stabbed, and Yin tells him that the dragon's ring reacts to anger, and getting stabbed by her lover could achieve this. Ling asks the king if he knows where Su's mother is, but he says he has no idea. However, the king tells Su her mother's had a final request. It was for him to help her find a blood ginseng, which when eaten, will let Su inherit her mother's legacy. But unfortunately the king has had no luck finding it, and her friends have no idea either. Hearing all this, Su wants some time to think things over, and Yin tells her he has especially prepared her room. When Su checks out the room, she finds it filled with things from her past. There is a lipstick that reminds her of when Yin gave her one as a gift in the past. But now she throws it away, and Ming thinks it's food and has a bite, but is quickly disappointed. Su wants to check her herb book to look up the blood ginseng, but Ming reminds her that she threw it away. Su has no choice but to write out the contents of the book which she has memorized. Meanwhile, Jin tells Ling to find information on the blood ginseng, and he departs to contact his mercenaries. On the other hand, Mei gets drunk and continuously requests more drinks. The staff informs her they are low on wine, so she goes off to look for more on her own. As she stumbles around, she encounters the king, Yun, and Jia, who look to be engaged in planning. The king tells her he will send more wine to her room, but as she leaves, Mei secretly sends a paper crane to find out what they are discussing. Su successfully recalls the properties of the blood ginseng, which seems to provide massive benefits for space sorcerers. Suddenly, a figure enters the room through the window, and Su finds that it was just Jin. He laughs at her messy appearance and gives her a change of clothes. Jin is dazzled by her new outfit, and tells her to forget about Yun. They are about to kiss, but Mei and Li interrupt, saying they have news to report. But Jin gets mad and zaps them. For ruining his moment with Su, he punishes them, forcing Ling to hold Mei up without touching the ground. Ling goes on to report that the blood ginseng is one of the treasures being offered this year by the Mushin Mansion. He then tells them that in ancient times, a man called Mr. Mu found a mystical land where rare plants and treasures would grow. He established his house there, but would often get attacked by people looking for treasures. So in the end he signed a peace pact, to open up his house once a year, and bring out a hundred treasures for people to find and compete for. Mei goes on to report what she heard. Jia complains to the king about Yun, almost letting her get killed by Jin, and she threatens to cast her spell on him once more. The king says that they are both at fault, and reminds them that they are working on a task that has the potential to change the world, warning them to do their jobs correctly, or they will both be replaced. Suddenly, Yun jumps into the room, and gets immediately restrained by Jin and Su. He has come to tell Su the truth. He says that his father did actually know her mother, but wasn't telling the whole truth. He warns them about Jia, saying she is not just a normal servant. He says that they should go after the blood ginseng, but Jin refuses to let him come along. However, Yun reasons that if they don't take him and Jia, the king will be suspicious and send people to secretly follow them. Instead of being secretly followed, Su agrees to bring them along, despite Jin's protest. The next day, the king sees them off, and they head to Mushian Mansion. Ling wonders why they don't just fly there, but Yin tells him they must save as much strength as possible so they can face the traps and obstacles at the mansion. As they travel, a giant boulder comes falling down. Jin uses his lightning to destroy it, but it bursts and creates an odd fog. It's a strange poison, but the acacia tree saves Su with its fruit. Su gets caught and pulled away. She finds Li Yao and wonders if she is working with Yun and Jia, but Li Yao says she is there to ask for another acacia fruit. Most of her scars were healed, but there is still one that remains. Li Yao is willing to give anything for another fruit, but Su remembers how she tried to kill her and turns her down. She gives the fruit to cure her friends, and they continue on their way. The group makes it to the entrance of the Mushin Mansion, but the entrance appears to be blocked. Ling tries to break through with force, but it doesn't work. Ming appears, sensing treasure, and drags Su in. The others see that weapons are prohibited, and they quickly follow after Su. Inside, Ming is also gone, because his ability to find treasure is not allowed. It's complete chaos inside the mansion, as people find and chase after treasures. The Liya siblings are among the people fighting for the treasures. Suddenly, a masked man appears, declaring he has obtained the blood ginseng and quickly makes a run for it. 
Hearing this, Jin tells the group to chase the man. The group chases after him, and Sue uses her space magic to get ahead. She tries to catch him with the acacia tree, but he dodges and dashes across the water. Liao appears before the man, offering to catch him in exchange for an acacia fruit, and Sue comes from behind. But the man slips away, and Sue ends up in an awkward situation with Liao. The man leads them to a crimson field, and disappears. As the others investigate, they are also transported away. They find themselves transported to a mysterious forest. Jin and Su notice something strange, and realize that they are surrounded by demon eye trees. The demon eyes surround them and attack, wanting to drain their spirit power. The group easily fights them off, but there seem to be just too many. Eventually, some of the eyes latch onto Su and absorb her power. Su becomes weakened, and a swarm of eyes attacks her. However, she gets saved by Liao, and she requests an acacia fruit for saving her. Su wonders why her appearance is so important, but ends up giving her the fruit, and Liao quickly leaves. The mysterious man appears again, and as the group tries to catch him, he sinks into the water. Everyone falls in after him, and they are transported once again. This time they arrive at a misty bridge. They are unsure if they should cross, but Jia volunteers to go first. Su sends the acacia tree after her just in case, and as Jia crosses the bridge, a chain suddenly grabs her. Despite the acacia tree grabbing her, its branch gets broken. The group crosses the bridge and sees that Jia is fine. They find themselves at the inner part of the mansion, where all the best treasures are hidden and where the owner of the mansion lives. When they head inside, they find it filled with treasures. They get another glimpse of the man, but when they follow him, they just find a dead end. Meanwhile, the mysterious man reveals himself to be the crown prince, and he joins his wife, Yua, the owner of the mansion. She asks what he has been up to, and the crown prince says he was just watching the people fight over the treasures. But Yua reveals she has been watching him through her magic mirror, and gets angry that he led a group of people through the secret teleportation points, and led them to the inner area. The crown prince says he knows she gets lonely because people rarely make it to the inner area, so he brought some random people to entertain her. Hearing this, Yua thinks he is so thoughtful and apologizes for getting mad at him. But suddenly they hear Jin and Yuan talking about Su in the mirror, and Yua realizes that the crown prince is helping his ex fiance Yua becomes outraged, thinking the crown prince must still love Su, so she hits a red button. The room begins to shake, and the group gets transported, and they are each imprisoned in a barrier. Jin tries to use his lightning to break free, but it's no use. Su tries to use her space magic to escape, but that also doesn't work. Yun tells them that the barrier is made from a special jade that blocks most magic. Suddenly, a swarm of demon eyes appears in each space. They are more advanced than the ones they faced in the forest, with the ability to change forms and adapt. Jin fights a serpent, which he destroyed, but it reforms into a man. Things are looking bad, as everyone struggles against the demon eyes. Just as things are about to get ugly, the demon eyes disappear. A giant disco ball drops down, and Yua makes her entrance. She introduces herself to them as the 186th head of the Mu family. The crown prince is also revealed. Since he brought them all here for her entertainment, she decides to have some fun. She decides to start with Su, and brings her to the front. To make things fair, she restores Su's strength. She challenges her to a fight. If Su can defeat her before the incense burns out, she will let them all go, and even give her the blood ginseng. But if Su loses, all her friends will be killed. The incense is lit, and the fight begins. Su starts off by attacking with her fire, but Yua dodges, and there is a flash of light. Yua can also use fire, and throws it back at Su. Su uses her space magic, and attacks Yua from behind. But there is another flash of light, and Yua can also use space magic. Yua teleports all around Su, toying with her, and knocks her to the ground. Su wonders how Yua is able to use space magic, and Yua reveals that her disco ball has the ability to copy all attacks for her to use. The incense is burning out, and the crown prince panics. He looks over to Jia, who he knows is a part of the assassin clan, but she is powerless. Yua notices the crown prince's odd movements, and thinks he is being seduced by Su. Yua becomes enraged and decides to kill all Su's friends. They are all stabbed, and Su is devastated. Yua whips Su and she crawls over to Jin. They share a moment, but Yua breaks it up, as she finishes Jin off, and continues to whip Su. Su falls unconscious and enters her inner space. She is then told by the acacia tree, that there is a way to win. 
Su is demoralized, but the tree tells her that Liao planted a seed from the fruit she gave her, so he has an extra branch outside that they can use as their secret weapon. The acacia tree erupts from the ground, and it has also found the blood ginseng. Yua is shocked the ginseng was found, and outside it seems like blood begins to rain down. Yua demands the ginseng back, attacking Su with her different treasures, but Su manages to block or avoid all the attacks. She approaches the blood ginseng, but Yua reveals Jin is still alive, taking him hostage. The crown prince tells her to choose the blood ginseng, and Jin tells her that he trusts her. Su chooses the blood ginseng, and Yua finishes Jin off. Su begins to create a concoction in her alchemy pot, while Yua tries to stop her. We learn that the blood ginseng will give a space sorcerer the power to go back in time. Su descends into her pot, and emerges with her powers awakened. She goes back in time to a few moments earlier, and stops Yua, stabbing her with the acacia tree. Yua's blood floats in the air, forming a sword and enters into Su's mind. After that, Su sees the crown prince sneaking away, and confronts him. The prince says he was working undercover to help her. He says he worked with King Ouyang, Yun and the assassin clan. They told him to seduce Yua and convince her to put up the blood ginseng as a prize. He swears he had no ill intentions, and Su suddenly disappears. Su moves back in time, unable to control the power. She watches the events of the previous day, but is unable to interact with anyone. She tries getting Jin's attention, but she gets pulled by an unknown force. But she manages to push through, summoning a blood drop that flies into her body. Su awakens in the body, and is glad to see Jin is alive. She locks the door, predicting Ling and Mei's arrival. Jin is shocked at how Su knew they would be there. Su then tells Jin about the catastrophe at the Mushin mansion, where she witnessed all of her friends dying in front of her and was unable to prevent it. But Jin tells her that since they are all alive and healthy, she saved everyone, which relieves her. Su is about to warn him about King Ouyang's connection to the assassin clan, but she suddenly freezes up. Yun shows up while Ling and Mei are bickering outside, and Jin suddenly comes out holding Su. He asks Yun for help, and he is taken to a healing spring. The king also arrives, and immediately notices the mark of the blood ginseng on Su's head. The king is delighted seeing this, and acts distressed by Su's condition. The king says that he has brought his nation's best healers to help, and asks Jin to leave Su in his care, but Jin insists on staying by her side. The king's attendants appear suspicious, and they are surrounded by a darkness that tries to provoke Jin's dark power. Ling watches from a distance, and we learn that Jin predicted this. Jin is playing along while they find a way to escape. Ling keeps watch, while Mei rushes to get help from Hell City. Mei rushes into town to pass on the message to the Hell City spies, but finds them all dead. She runs into a woman she recognizes as the Third Elder, who tells her that their spy network within the Shijin nation has been destroyed. It's impossible to get a message out to Hell City, and the woman is revealed to be a traitor, and Mei engages her in a fight. Meanwhile, back at the spring, Jin hears voices, telling him to consume Su's power. His dark power begins to manifest, and he struggles to control himself. The king joins in, and uses his magic to compel Jin to attack Su. But Su blocks the attack with her magic that activates. As Yun and Jia watch, Jia calls Jin foolish, revealing she saw through his plan. She caught Ling hiding in the trees, and was the one who took out the Hell City spies. Jia mocks Yun about falling in love with Su. Although he was only meant to pretend, Jia can tell that he fell in love for real. Yun says he has no regrets, but Jia reveals that once Jin absorbs Su, they will reset the universe, Su will be gone, and only she will remain. The ritual continues, as a circle appears and the water begins to rise. But things are put to a stop, as the Grandmaster appears. The king is shocked to see him, and the Grandmaster blows everyone away. The king's attendants all flee, and the Grandmaster reveals Ling and Mei, who thank him for saving their lives. The Grandmaster confronts the king, who tries to fight him but is no match. He even throws his son at him, but the Grandmaster gets a hold of him. He comments on how the king was able to so easily sacrifice his son, but the king reasons that if they achieve their goal, his son won't remember when they reset the universe and bring back Hong Yun's master. But the Grandmaster says, despite wanting his master back, he knows that would be against her wishes. He continues to choke the king, but the king says that the Grandmaster is the White Lord of the Assassin Clan, and is forbidden from killing. Although he can't kill, the Grandmaster teleports to the north, and leaves the king on a battlefield. The Grandmaster returns and admits his connection to the Assassin Clan, but it's more complicated than they think. 
both Ling and Mei decide to trust him after he just saved both their lives. He starts healing Jin, which confuses Ling why he isn't saving his disciple. But the Grandmaster explains that he can see that Su already obtained the blood ginseng and turned back time once. It has its risks and her condition is beyond his healing. Ling asks what the king wanted with them, and the Grandmaster explains that they wanted to combine Jin's dark blood and Su's blood space powers to create a dark space-time array, which would let them control the power to reverse time and change history. Jin wakes up and says he will do anything to save Su. The Grandmaster says that to save Su, they must go back to the Mushin mansion. The next day, Liao is waiting in the mountains but the group comes flying right past her. At the Mushin mansion, the crown prince is luring people with the blood ginseng, but the group zooms right past him. He is left with the other treasure hunters and quickly makes a run for it. The group swiftly makes it through all the teleportation points and makes it to the inner area. As they arrive, Mei notices Yua, who seems to have a different appearance. Yua is startled and drops her food, but Mei catches it. Yua is grateful, introducing herself as the head of the Mu family and offers Mei a reward. Mei asks for the blood ginseng, and Yua happily agrees. She brings out the blood ginseng, and the Grandmaster starts his procedure with Su. The Crown Prince also returns, but he seems to have brought a mob with him. They're all amazed to see the blood ginseng, wanting to take it for themselves, but Jin and the others fight them off. As they fight, the blood ginseng is fused with Su's body, thanks to the Grandmaster's spell, and Su awakens, as her power overflows. Everyone watches in shock and amazement as Su levels up multiple times thanks to the blood ginseng, instantly becoming a grandmaster level space sorcerer. In her inner space, Meng and the acacia tree also develop, and Meng evolves into a new form. The treasure hunters all jump on Su, but get blown away, and they make a run for it. Meng is amazed at Su's advancement, and Su quickly thanks the grandmaster for saving her. The grandmaster warns her about the dangers of messing with time. Yua arrives with the prince, and Su sees her new appearance. The Grandmaster tells her she also has the power to erase a person's existence, and she had done so when she killed Yua in the other timeline. Su says that she had no choice, because Yua had killed her friends, but the Grandmaster says that no matter the reason, erasing someone is taboo, and is the reason why she was punished. He warns her that next time he might not be able to save her. He then congratulates her on advancing to the Grandmaster level, a feat that would normally have taken 20 years, and he says that she is now ready to inherit her mother's legacy. He reveals that her mother is the woman from his painting, and tells them that the world is made up of three realms, the human realm, the spirit realm, and the god realm. Su's mother was the goddess of space, Yenhua, and she somehow ended up in the human realm. She explored the world, and ended up taking two disciples, the Grandmaster, and a man named Han. She then founded the Assassin Clan to set up an information network to help her find a reincarnated baby that was said to bring disaster to the world. She granted them all powers, but in exchange, forbid them from taking human lives. After a hundred years, they still couldn't find the baby until one day, Yenhua was given a message that changed her plan. She decided to instead use the power of space to create an entirely new world and rewrite the laws of God. To do this, she trained more space sorcerers, but the spirit realm noticed her plan and sent an army to stop her. This turned into a war and most of the space sorcerers were killed and the assassin clan was weakened. They were losing the war, but Yenhua was also pregnant. She used her powers to give birth and divided her power up between the acacia tree and the grandmaster, telling them to protect her daughter so she can carry out her legacy. After that, she fights against the army of the spirit realm and the grandmaster joins her, wanting to fight with her until the end but he gets knocked away, and his master takes her chance to send him away. After that, she was captured and taken away to the god realm. The grandmaster then goes to his master's child, but finds Han holding her. He says that they will never have the power to ascend to the god realm to save their master, so instead, he plans to use her child, along with the blood ginseng and dark blood, to turn back time and bring their master back. Han runs away, and the two fight over the child. The Grandmaster destroys his eye, and he drops the child. In the end, Han gets away, and he was left with the child. He used the dragon's ring to split her soul, sending most of it to Earth, but leaving one piece in this world so she could return. The Grandmaster says that Han ended up taking control of the assassin clan, and joined up with King Ouyang who also wanted to bring back their master. He tells Jin that he was chosen as a child, and the assassin clan has been secretly feeding him dark energy. 
Sue wonders why her mother wanted to create a new world and who her father is. But the Grandmaster doesn't know, and he instructs her to go to a secret ground that may have the answers to her questions. Jin escorts the Grandmaster out and is suspicious of his intentions. He believes everything is going according to the Grandmaster's plan, and he intentionally let Su fall into King Ouyang's trap so she would get the blood ginseng, and his plan to make Su a Grandmaster level sorcerer would be achieved 20 years sooner. He also wonders how Su could possibly create a new world as a half goddess when even her mother failed to do so. Jin tries to attack him, but he dodges. The Grandmaster says that everything has been within his predictions, and he risked Su getting the blood ginseng because it would have been more dangerous to cultivate for 20 years with the assassin clan after her. As for his question about creating the new world, the Grandmaster says he has no need to know, and Jin is frustrated by his answer. Jin returns to his friends battered, and he tells Su to forget her inheritance, saying that the Grandmaster is using her. But Su insists on finding out who she is, and can't just give up on inheriting her mother's legacy. Jin is hurt that she is not willing to trust him and flies away. The others make their way to the secret grounds, and Mei tries to cheer Su up about Jin leaving. They make it to a town and stop for food, but Su can only think about Jin, and a shady figure watches them from outside. Su and Mei get drunk, and they all end up falling into a well, but this was a trap to draw out their stalker. They surround her, and she reveals herself to be Liao. She once again asks for another acacia fruit, because in this timeline she still has a scar. Su remembers that it was because of her help she was able to defeat Yua at the Mushin mansion, so she tells Liao to join them and promises to give her another fruit. Later that night, Yun is also watching them, and he gets approached by Jia. She tells him that they must continue with their plan. Yun says that without Jin present, he will follow them into the secret grounds and find a chance to capture Su. Jia tells him that Jin visited the assassin clan to arrange a deal with their leader. We see Jin storming in and meeting with Han. Jin wants to work with them to disrupt the Grandmaster's plans. Han admits that he plans to sacrifice both him and Su to turn back time and they will no longer exist in the new universe. But Jin is okay with it because he believes that the Grandmaster's plan results in a worse ending for Su. Jin reveals the White Token and demands to become the White Lord. When he fought with the Grandmaster, he managed to steal it from him. With this, Han agrees and joins his Red Token with Jin's. He activates a spell, and Jin takes the Grandmaster's place as the White Lord. The next day, the group looks for a clue to find the secret grounds. As they look around, the chest piece the Grandmaster gave Su flies into a fan and changes into a beast. It runs off, and the group chases after it. It leads them to a dead end that changes into a door. Mei fails to open the door, so they try combining their powers to push it open. As they push, a fan suddenly opens the door, and Liao Sr., Sean, appears and tells them to hurry in, as some talismans follow after them. Mei is overjoyed to see her senior, and she introduces him to Su. Liao wonders what he is doing here, and he explains that he was sent by their master to assist them. As they walk around, the ground suddenly moves, and they are all thrown into a river. As they flow down the stream, they see that this space is filled with gigantic creatures. Yun and Jia manage to sneak in, watching from a distance. The group ends up getting split up, with Liao ending up in a frozen area, Ling being sent to an underwater area, and Mei ends up in a place filled with magma. As she tries to find her way out, she gets attacked by a golem. Meanwhile, Su is led by a giant floating hand, and she eventually comes to a gigantic knight, which comes to life and attacks her. She blocks its attack and shatters its sword. She apologizes for awakening it and tries to leave, but the knight continues to attack. However, she is saved by Sean, and Su ends up stabbing the knight, and it is defeated. She celebrates with Sean, and he offers her an apple, which she happily eats. They head off to find the others, but walk away from the floating hand's direction. Meanwhile, Yun and Jia come to a fork in the road while trying to track Su. Yun spots a carnivorous plant and tells Jia that Su must be in that direction. When they get close, Yun pushes her into the plant, but Jia casts magic on Yun causing him to suffer. She tells him to free her, but he refuses, remembering his promise to Su. He cuts off his arm that was affected and leaves her to die. The carnivorous plant is about to consume Jia, but she is suddenly freed, and she is found by several assassins. She is brought to Jin and informs him of Yun's betrayal. Jin declares that traitors must be punished and sends the assassins to find him. Meanwhile, Mei appears badly injured after fighting with the golem, and Ling comes to her rescue on a flying fish. 
He takes her to the woods and treats her violence, but when she wakes up, she gets mad at him for his strange method. They are suddenly interrupted when Yin appears and falls in front of them. He warns them that Su is in danger and passes out. Su continues together with Sean and a lady beetle climbs onto Su. Sean warns that it could be poisonous and shoes it away. As they walk, Su realizes that she has been poisoned. Sean says it must have been the bug, but Su thinks it was the apple that he gave her. Sean quickly carries her and Su is powerless to stop him. They end up in a cave where Sean encounters Liao. He tries to convince her that he is trying to take Su out of the space to see a doctor, but Liao sees through his lies. Sean admits he was offered 10 city-states in the north in exchange for Su. He blames their master, saying Jin was given special treatment while he was sent away on a mission for years in the north. The two start fighting, and while they are busy, Su manages to summon her dagger and stab Sean in the back. Liao then manages to catch him by the neck. Sean is surprised that this is the way things would end for him, and Liao finishes him off. She then gives Su the antidote to the poison, and Su awakens. She tries to offer her the acacia fruit as thanks, but fails, because Meng had eaten up all the fruits in her inner space. But Liao reveals that her scars are already healed from the first fruit Su gave her, but she used this as an excuse so she could follow her around. She reveals that all her actions were at the instruction of her master to protect Su. Su becomes curious about her master and asks about his character. Meanwhile, Yun awakens and finds Mei and Ling have patched his wound. They ask him why Su is in danger, and he tells them that there are more assassins after her, as well as Jin. Suddenly a wolf emerges and bites Yun. It drags him away, and he is brought before Jin and Jia. Yun is surprised Jia is still alive and disappointed to see Jin working with the assassins. Jin hands him over to Jia for his punishment, and he sends his assassins to find Su. Back at their camp, Mei and Ling debate if they should save Yun. They think that he would have been eaten by the wolf, but Mei wants to rescue him because he had mentioned Jin. But before they can decide, they are approached by a shadowy figure. Su and Liao spend the night together, and Liao seems to be finally over Jin. In the morning, Jin suddenly appears, but Su stomps on him because she is still mad at him for leaving. Jin apologizes and tells her that he has found a map for the secret grounds. Now that Jin is back, Liao decides to take her leave. But as she is leaving, she feels something is wrong, noticing the marking on Jin's arm to be of the assassin clan. She rushes back, but the two are nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Jia punishes Yun by feeding him to the carnivorous plants. She casts a spell on him and leaves, as the plants are left to devour him. She meets up with the other assassins and they tell her that Jin has found Su. But instead of taking her back to their headquarters, it seems he is leading her to the Temple of Inheritance. Jia uses her tracking spell and sees them heading for the temple. The Red Lord, Han appears and says that he never trusted Jin. They join hands and Han teleports them to the temple's location. Thanks to Han's superior space magic, they arrive before Jin and Su. Han tells them that this is also a cemetery that the goddess mercifully created for all the casualties from their war. He swears to sacrifice Su to bring back the goddess and restore the assassin clan's power. Later on, as Jin and Su arrive at the temple, Jin warns Su to think carefully before accepting her mother's request. Su asks if he knows something she doesn't, but Jin just promises that he will be there to support her no matter what she decides. They share a kiss, and Su heads on to the temple. She heads up and enters through the portal. Jin then opens up a space and tells Han that they are too late and Su has already entered the temple. Han breaks open the space and realizes they were tricked. They were in a fake area created using the acacia tree's paper magic. Han wonders why Jin would join and betray them because now he has lost the ability to kill and will be affected by their punishment magic. A magic circle forms under Jin and he suffers from their spell. But the Grandmaster suddenly appears and says that because Jin took his spot as the White Lord, he is no longer a part of the Assassin Clan and is free to kill the traitors. He blasts them all with his magic and Han tries to escape using his space magic but gets stopped and forced to the ground. He is surprised that the Grandmaster is on another level because Su's mother had given him half her power. The Grandmaster tells Han that he lost his way and finishes him off. The Grandmaster then goes to tend to Jin's wounds, and Jia manages to grab the red token. There is a flashback to Jin's confrontation with the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster tells him that if his plan succeeds, Su will ascend and he will not be able to be with her. Jin doesn't like the options between this and the Assassin Clan's plan, 
but he decides to work with the Grandmaster as long as he promises to let Sue decide on her own. The Grandmaster agrees with the condition and hands his white token over to Jin. The Grandmaster tells Jin that he is now the master of the Assassin Clan, but he has no interest in it and destroys the white token. We also see that Yun survived, thanks to Mei and her master. They all end up meeting together and wait for Su to return. Meanwhile, Su climbs to the top of the temple and discovers a statue of her mother who suddenly appears in front of her. Her mother explains that this is just a part of her consciousness that she left behind. She tells Su that she has been watching over her her whole life and has seen all the struggles she has been through. She then goes on to explain that the world is made up of three realms, but it is actually possible for anyone to ascend to the god realm with enough hard work. But the gods intentionally lied about this so there would be fewer gods. Because of the rules of heaven, every 100,000 years, a being known as the God Slayer emerges to kill all the gods, and they wanted fewer people to suffer this fate. So when the gods heard the God Slayer was reincarnated, they tried to find him before he awakened. But as they were searching for the child, there was a traitor among the gods, and she was the only one who managed to escape to the human realm. After that, she founded the Assassin Clan and continued to search for a hundred years, but as she was about to give up, she was given an inscription, written by past gods, who were looking for a way to survive. And that was for a powerful space sorcerer to create an entirely new universe, free from the heaven's rules and the god slayer. Sue gets excited when she learns it was her father that gave her mother the inscription. She asks about his whereabouts, but her mother tells her that he died protecting her during the war. Her mother tells her that, to create a new universe, she would have to sacrifice herself and ultimately become the space itself, so she would not be able to be with Jin. Sue is conflicted with the decision, and her mother tells her to think of the greater good and says that she has three days to decide. Sue gets teleported outside with the others, and the space begins to collapse, so they all retreat back to Hell City. They enjoy a meal together, and Sue finally realizes the identity of Jin's master to be Master Long, and thanks him for taking her in and training her on Earth. Long reveals that Yun was a double agent against his father and the Assassin clan, and only stabbed her because it was the Grandmaster's order. He says that his feelings towards her have never changed, and asks her to come back to him, but Sue awkwardly rejects him, and he leaves. Later that night, Yun goes to find Sue, but is confronted by Jin. Yun believes he is still in Sue's heart, and the two start a fight. As they battle, Yun recalls how he was always there for Sue, compared to Jin, who has only been with her for a few months. But Jin responds, saying that time is irrelevant when you meet the right person. Jin overwhelms Yun in the end, and tells him that he does not understand Sue. Meanwhile, Long and the Grandmaster relax in the hot spring, and Long recalls how the Grandmaster almost killed Sue. When he fought with Han, Sue was dropped off the cliff, but thankfully Long was there and caught her. The Grandmaster realizes this and feels that he owes her. Back at the Assassin Clan, the Assassins wonder what to do now that Han is dead, but Jia reveals the red token and claims the position as master. She tells them all that they have a new goal. Instead of trying to turn back time, they will take Sue's space power to get to a brighter future. Meanwhile, we see that King Ouyang survived, after being thrown on the battlefield by the Grandmaster. He has joined with the Northern forces, and orders them to invade Hell City and capture Sue. Sue stays in her room, thinking about her decision, and the days pass. As the last day approaches, Master Long goes to visit Sue, and sees that the Grandmaster is also there. Mei and Ling come running, and tell them that they have seen a lot of suspicious people arriving in the city. Long finds it strange, because you can only get into the city with a pass. They check his room, and see that his seal is missing. The Grandmaster tells them that there must be a mole among them. They quickly go to check on Su, and find it to be Li Yao pretending to be her. Yun also reveals himself, as the one who stole the seal, and sold the travel passes into the city. He says that everyone is after Su, but he is leading them into a trap, because Su has already left. Long wonders how they could teleport away without the Grandmaster knowing, but realizes that they used the secret underground tunnel to escape. Long is angered that all his disciples betrayed him, but Mei tells him that this was Su's decision. Back on the night that Jin and Yun fought, Su approached them and explained her plan to them all. She apologizes to Yun for being unable to be with him, but he is still determined to help her however he can. Jin and Su reach a point where they have to say their goodbyes. Su tells him she loves him, and Jin responds by casting magic on the lava to make molten hearts float in the air. 
Back at the Hell City, Master Long punishes Mei for betraying him and ends up sending them all off to fight off the attackers and clean up their mess. Chia and the assassins arrive, but the Grandmaster confronts them. They try to use their punishment magic on him, but it doesn't work because he is no longer part of the clan. He decides to not kill them, not wanting to destroy what his master created, so he sends them all away. The city has become a battlefield, and King Oliang gets confronted by Yun. The king tells him once he reverses time, he promises to love and cherish him in the next life. He attacks Yun, but gets defeated in the end. Yun tells him he will spare him if he makes him king. Ouyang hands over the king's seal, but tells him that in order to escape from the north, he made a deal with the leader and offered up most of their lands. Yun declares himself as king and orders the retreat of his troops. Master Long confronts the leader of the northern forces, but is surprisingly blown away. As they are about to clash, Jin suddenly returns to aid his master. The man throws spinning discs at him, but Jin's lightning destroys the weapon. Jin charges up his attack and blows the man away. Meanwhile, Su gives her decision to her mother. She doesn't want to sacrifice herself, but also doesn't want to let her mother down. So she decides to become stronger, so she can defeat the God Slayer one day. Her mother supports her decision and unlocks the Dragon Ring's full power. This raises Su's power to the next level. And with this power, the Acacia Tree also evolves, and Ming transforms into a human form. Her mother warns her that the God Slayer will awaken soon, so she must train even harder and find allies she can rely on. Her mother tells her that her father's soul is sealed in the dragon's ring, and Su wonders if she can bring him back. A beam of light shoots up into the sky, and everyone watches from a distance. Long is surprised that the Grandmaster let Su make this decision, but he says his debt to Su has now been paid. Su had always felt like a prisoner to destiny, but now she finally feels like she knows who she is and is the master of her own destiny. She is joined by Jin, and she wonders what their future holds. But that's where this series ends. Remember to give the video a like and tell me what you liked most about this series in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.